when I first got into educating people on this, people were doing like 10 net carbs a day. And this was what was actually becoming really detrimental to women. This is how I determined, found the whole fasting cycle that I wrote about in Fast Like a Girl. And the challenge is that progesterone needs glucose to be high in order for her to make her appearance. So the week before a woman has her menstrual cycle, you need to bring glucose up so that estrogen can do, I mean, progesterone can do her job. The interesting thing about progesterone is she also stimulates GABA. So technically, we should feel calmer if we mind by her rules, which is more carbohydrates. And I always recommend better carbohydrates. You will feel calm. You won't have those PMS symptoms. Then when you go into the rest of the menstrual cycle, what I found so interesting about a ketone is that ketones, and I really want to know your opinion on this, also stimulate GABA. Just ask anybody who does a three-day water fast. Nobody's going to kill anybody on the third day of a water fast. Where you'll find them is meditating on the side of a mountain. They don't want to talk to you because their GABA levels are so high because as ketones go up, GABA will go up as, as, as well. So what I love about what you're saying is that we really need to personalize this. That was just an example of how women can personalize it. But what I'm hearing from you is, could we all just scratch from our head that the ketogenic diet is a high fat diet? Is that what, you know how it got that rep reputation that you just eat a, a bunch of butter and you're going to be fine? So there are three things that respond to. So the first thing to respond to is, is the ketogenic a high fat diet? Well, you can get into ketosis without eating anything at all. So you don't need fat. You don't need to eat fat to get into ketosis. However, if you are eating a ketogenic, if, if, when you break your fast and you're eating food, if you choose to try to stay in ketosis, which some people choose to do and some people need to do, especially with certain health conditions, it can be very beneficial to stay in ketosis all the time, or for most of the time anyway, then you've got to eat a diet that is going to is not going to break your your keto your ketone production. And in those cases, the majority of your calories will have to come from fat because fat is the macronutrient that stimulates insulin the least. And so you the, the then you have to follow those rules which are relatively high in fat, only moderate in protein, only to your protein requirements, not high in protein, mm. and 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 low carbohydrate. So when you're eating a ketogenic diet to try to stay in ketosis or be in ketosis most of the time, yes, that is a high fat diet compared but to the a, standard that we are yeah. accustomed to being recommended. And not yes. a fat only diet. No, no. Right. A fat I only want, diet. I will want not, people to no. hear that. Yeah. No. A, a fat only diet is not going to meet your nutritional requirements. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Great. So you another thing you put, so another you thing you commented on, right? So you brought up three things, and so another thing is the the GABA. So GABA, yes. So, so I'm a metabolic and nutritional psychiatrist. I specialize in, you know, I un, I really study, specialize, work in this field, write about this, speak about this, teach about this. It's it's all about understanding how our nutritional choices and our metabolic health affects our mental health, and so. Mental health conditions like depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, PTSD, panic attacks, many different types of mental health conditions, what you'll see in brain chemistry is an imbalance between GABA, which is mm -hmm. the brain's calming neurotransmitter. The, the brain contains dozens of neurotransmitters, but the, the two major neurotransmitters in the brain, and we don't hear a lot about them. Yes, there's serotonin, there's dopamine, but we don't often hear very much about glutamate and GABA. Yeah. So glutamate and GABA, you can kind of think of people out there listening. GABA is kind of the brain's brake pedal, so it's calming the brain, and glutamate is the brain's gas pedal, which is stimulating the brain. 
And, yep. you know, the brain needs to be able to regulate that ratio depending on the circumstances. So if you're a parent and your child runs into the street, you're going to get a glutus. You want to want your brain to be stimulated to do something about that. You yes. don't want to be sitting meditating on a mountaintop while your child's yeah. running into traffic. So, yeah. and, 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 and you also, you know, want to be calm when there's no reason to be upset. And that's where GABA comes in. So, so really, unless something unusual is going on, you have kind of a nice balance between these two neurotransmitters, GABA, which is the brake pedal, and glutamate, which is the gas pedal. Now, one of the ways that you can regulate your own brain chemistry is by, one, I, one of the things I like to say is one of the most powerful ways to balance your brain chemistry is by unbalancing your diet. Because mm. if you're eating a diet that's too high in carbohydrate, particularly refined carbohydrate, or any diet that's causing your glucose levels to run too high too often, or your insulin levels to run too high too often, you will see that that's going to overstimulate GABA and you're going to get an imbalance mm. in, in glutamate and GABA. So you're actually eating in a way which is destabilizing your brain chemistry and putting your brain into overdrive. And you can see this people get very anxious in between meals. They can have panic attacks if they don't eat sugar frequently enough. If they're really on that roller coaster of glucose and insulin all day long, and, and, and then you can really see destabilized brain chemistry. So you can calm your, your brain chemistry naturally without medications or alcohol, <laughs> you know, with, without benzodiazepines like like clonopin and Xanax and Ativan, those and alcohol works the same way. Benzodiazepines, which are very commonly prescribed anxiety and sleep medications, and alcohol, they work the same way by stimulating GABA. But why is your GABA not working well enough? It's because the glutamate GABA uh, system is out of balance. So if you bring glutamate down by following a ketogenic diet or by fasting or doing other things that are good for your metabolic health, you can you have a lot more control over your brain chemistry than you may realize. And, and that's a really hopeful prescription for people who either don't want to take medication for a mental health issue, can't tolerate medications for a mental health issue, have become dependent or addicted on some of the benzodiazepines can be very addictive and can create physical dependence, but you can get that same calm, focused energy in many cases if you understand the powerful relationship between food, metabolism, and brain chemistry. You know what? I'm, I'm, you have me really thinking about something that is recently coming into the cultural zeitgeist that I haven't been able to square my head on which is that people who are neurodivergent. Now, I look at neurodivergent as just a brain that thinks different, learns different, like, it, you know, I don't, I don't know if we have, and maybe you have a, a well-formed uh, definition of neurodivergency. But if they take progesterone as they go through menopause, that it can actually make them have more ADD and more brain fog. And now I'm thinking, well, progesterone stimulates GABA. So is it possible to get too much GABA that would throw this glutamate GABA balance off and send your brain into more anxiety and more lack of focus? That you really nailed the way you said that for my brain to go, oh, it's balanced. Just like everything else in the body, it's balance. So it's about, it's about the eating and living in a way that's going to support your brain and body finding its own happy equilibrium, yeah. wherever that is and whatever it needs to be from day to day and hour to hour. Like you said, you don't want it to be exactly the same all the time. Sometimes you want the brain to be stimulated and, and really focused. Other times you want it to be calm, sleeping. Yeah. And so it, it needs to be flexible and it needs to be resilient and it needs to be, I mean, the, 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 if you understand how to eat to kind of keep from throwing monkey wrenches into the system, because many of yeah. the foods that we think of as healthy and some of the, and many of the foods that we already know are not healthy, they can really cause problems. They can really work against your brain's efforts to try to regulate itself. 
And so mm. the more of those monkey wrenches you throw in there, the you know, refined carbohydrates like sugars and flours, the seed oils, the cereal products, the you know, chemical additives, the you know, so many of these 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 ultra processed food ingredients are causing AGEs to form. They are causing mm. glutamate and GABA to become unbalanced. They are causing glucose levels to to become unbalanced. And and when glucose is on a roller coaster, insulin is also on a roller coaster. Yeah. And therefore, many other hormones that listen to insulin are also on a roller coaster. And yeah. you're unstable from within. It feels like it's coming from inside of you, but actually most of that is because you had the wrong information about what a healthy diet, healthy diet is supposed to look like. Yep. Yep. So, so we, I'm, think, yeah. I'm thinking like the, the standard Western diet, we call it now, is because of the ultra processed foods is glutamate stimulating. And then I think it's interesting that if we're on that train, then the glass of wine is something we're going to crave at night because it's GABA stimulating is and and all the medications you were talking about. So I really love where your brain is going right now with this glutamate GABA conversation, because the behaviors we're doing, are we trying to naturally balance this out through food and drinks and drugs? love that you brought that up because that's exactly what's happening for most people is that we're unstable and in, internally unstable, our neurotransmitters, our appetite hormones, our stress hormones, our reproductive hormones, our blood pressure regulating hormones, our inflammatory system, our immune system, everything is out of balance if we don't eat the right way. And so we're chasing that all day long. We wake up and we're too tired in the morning. So what do we do? We have coffee. Later in the day, we get sleepy after a meal because we've eaten the wrong way. So we have another cup of coffee. And then at the end of the day, we have a, a high carbohydrate meal. We get very sleepy and, 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 or, 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 and, 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 and we can be in between meals as the sleepiness is wearing off, the calmness is wearing off. You can feel overstimulated. Mm. And then you're reaching for, you know, for example, a, a nightcap so that you can get to sleep. Right. And yeah. so you're you're trying to regulate yourself using substances without realizing that so much of that instability is coming from food. And and so it, it, it's one of the fascinating things about the relationship between the way we eat and our internal balance is that most people are eating in this way that is profoundly destabilizing. Right. And yeah. profoundly destabilizing. And so yeah. and it takes a few days to to mm. to step off this roller coaster, but it is so worth it because you have no idea how much calmer, how you can feel how much more energy you can have, how much better regulated you can feel, how much easier the day is if you're yeah. not throwing these monkey wrenches into your hormonal system and your neurotransmitter system. And you let your body calm down. And fasting is one of the best ways to, it, it's a, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a detoxification really. Yeah. And of the most profound type. <laughs>